Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, IPC Hebron. As we were singing, until the day of our Lord, let nothing stand in our way. Let us continue to offer our sacrifice of praise to the Lord until he comes back. Amen. Amen. Stotra gidam paadi to me. Uh, and it should come from the bottom of your heart. Uh, from the bottom of your heart, it needs to come out. And that's kind of what we'll talk about today as well. Um, so, as you know, we're studying from the book of James. Be doers of the word. Don't just talk the talk, but be doers of the word is what we're studying. And today's sermon will be titled, Be Quick to Listen, Slow to Speak, and Slow to Get Angry. The subtitle I've given it is Muzzling the Mouth and Controlling the Tongue. Controlling the Tongue. You know, when you go to the doctor's office for a checkup, the physician during the exam will ask you, open wide your mouth and stick out your tongue and say, ah. Kids, this might be the only possible circumstances uh, in which you're allowed to stick your tongue out at an adult, right? When the doctor says so. The physician seems to be able to tell a great deal about your health just by looking into your mouth and your throat. And that is true in the spiritual realm as well. When it comes to our mouth, an ac- uh, it comes as an accurate index of the health of our hearts. Jesus said in Matthew 12 verse 34, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen? Amen. So a modern saying for that is, uh, when a well, what is inside the well and nothing else will come up in the bucket. What is in the heart is what comes out. Amen? So if in our heart it is springs of living water, then water will come out. But if in our hearts it is bitterness, anger, the words that will come out in the bucket will be dirty. Amen. Amen. And this is something that James wants to teach us in this book. The spiritual physician, the half brother of Jesus, the pastor. We learned about all his qualities. The camel knees prayer warrior is engaging in this rigorous analysis to teach us about this small little organ called the tongue. It's maybe 70 grams in a male and about 60 grams. And I looked it up. It's 2.5 ounces or so is how small the tongue is. We have pathologists here, I know. There's muscles. It's made of muscles and it's covered by mucous membranes. And it is not connected to a bone per se. It's one of the only muscles that's not connected to the bone. But this small little organ is spent uh, so much time on in the book of James. If you look and analysis the number of words that is used in the book of James, about 20% of the words in the book of James is spent on this very idea in one form or another to talk about this uh, words that we speak and how words are a true indication of our heart and the words that come out tells us about what is inside of our heart. So for us to be doers of the word, we need to understand a little bit more. And that's why James spends 20% of the time in this. You know, in fact, chapter 3, he spends the first whole portion of the chapter, in fact, the entire chapter, talking about the tongue. Talking about the tongue. But we're still in chapter 1, so I'll start with chapter 1, verse 19 through 21, and verse 26 as well. So if you turn your Bibles with me to James chapter 1, verse 19 to 21, and then verse 26. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. So is anybody excluded? Both brothers and sisters. You must all, all. So this is not something optional. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in our lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. Verse 26, if you claim to be religious, and that religious is if you claim to be serving God, but cannot control your tongue, 
or don't control your tongue. You're fooling yourselves and your religion is worthless. Your service to God is useless. So if you're serving God and can't control your tongue, then you're fooling yourselves and your service to God is useless. Why is James being so hard in explaining all of this? Uh, I know that pastor uh, said a joke the other day, and I didn't translate it properly, I don't think. There was once a fight between the teeth and the tongue, and the teeth and the tongue got into a huge fight. What happened? The teeth told the tongue, I will bite down on you, and that can cause you tongue to be cut up. And then the tongue said, oh yeah, one word about out of my mouth and someone will punch you out so hard that all, all 32 of those pearly whites will be knocked out. That's the right way to translate it, I think. Maybe you also heard it being said like this, two years, we are given two years and one tongue. And not only the one tongue, but it's hidden behind two jails, right? The teeth and the lips. So we should be double doing the listening with the two ears, half the time talking only after pausing and pondering about what we're about to say. The tongue, although small, it is powerful and can be used for good and evil. And it is out of proportion, disproportionate to its size in terms of its importance. A famous person once said like this, some people's tongues are long enough to cut off their own throat. You've also heard it said, sticks and stones may make, break my bones, but words can really hurt. And the words that we speak, as especially a child of God, needs to be words of encouragement, blessing, and edifying others. So we'll look into that in more detail. The tongue is hard to tame on the earth, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit, it is divinely tameable. Amen? Amen. We, need the, uh, we need the Holy Spirit, but we also as humans need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. And we also have the responsibility to guard our words. Guard our words. Amen. Many of the temptations that we face come with our eyes. But many of the sins that we do easily comes out through our mouth. It exits through the mouth. See, the temptation might come in, but then the sins exit through our mouth. So our tongue is really, in the human way, a vessel of dishonor. It is how we sin a lot of times. But here we see James, especially in chapter 3. As we go on to chapter 3, it talks about how we need to uh, put a brittle on our tongue. A bridle, a bridle on our tongue. This week I had a chance to go to Kentucky and I went to the Kentucky Derby and I saw how after a horse, a runner, a champion horse is born, within a few days it starts to run and uh, then they start to put a bridle on it to train it, to train it. And then it starts to uh, go in the direction and the speed that the uh, person, the jockey on top is able to ride it. So similarly, I started thinking about how we need to train up our children in the way that they should go. There's a difference between a wild horse that needs to be trained and a foal that's just born that needs to be trained. So as children of God, uh, as parents, let us be careful in bringing the gospel to the heart of our children so they're able to use this uh, tongue appropriately, appropriately. There are many sins of the tongue. I talked about the sins exiting through the mouth. Can we look at the sins of the tongue? There's anger. There's fits of rage. There's quarreling. There's profanity, foul language, lying, deceit, oath or swearing, construct, non-constructive criticism that comes from a not from the heart, not out of love, but to destroy someone. There's also levity. You know, we think saying a joke is fine, and there is a certain room for that, 
Uh, but when, we, when it gets over the line and it, it, it gets into foolish jesting or grumbling or murmuring, then there is something going on called bullying in America. Uh, there's gossip. There's name calling. Then there's boasting and bragging. You know, if you're honest with yourself, at one time or, or another, some of these have been coming out of our tongue. Some of this have come out of our tongue, even after we claim to be a child of God. So how can we overcome this? Because what's down in the well is what comes up in the bucket, right? It's really a hard issue. It's really a hard issue. In James chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, and chapter 5, all the chapters have different portions. And if you have time, go and study those. The root cause of saying evil things, all of those things, the sins of the tongue comes from the heart. What is in the well is what comes out in the bucket. So how can we renew the tongue? How can we reclaim the organ that is uh, least honorable and make it a uh, vessel of honor? How can we speak truth in love? How can we speak truth in love? So let's look at a few things as a child of God we can do. Uh, we'll talk about pausing before you speak, understanding the purpose of our tongue, understanding the power and the parameters or the direction that the tongue gives. Then we'll also talk about praying and praising in our natural language, but also in speaking in tongues. And that'll, that'll be the way that we will reclaim the tongue, that we'll reclaim the tongue. So the first of that is to pause, pause. You know, it's not just tongue anymore, it's emails, right? Tweets, texts, be real, Insta stories, Facebook Live, all kinds of ways that we can use our tongue, whether it's through electronic means. And we need to press pause before we speak. Have you heard of this acronym, WAIT? And the W stands for Y, A stands for AM, I stands for I, and T for t talking. Why am I talking? Why am I talking? Is this a boast, or is this a brag, or is this to hurt someone? Before, even with a renewed heart, we need to examine our intentions, we need to examine our hearts, and say, why am I saying this? So if we're able to pause before we speak, and say, you know, there's a test, a famous saying uh, by a, a, a radio host that said, what I'm saying is, is it true? What I'm saying is it true first? Is it necessary for me to say it? Is it kind? Is it helpful? And if that passes the test of those questions, after you wait and you examine your intentions, then you can speak. How many of us get angry and, uh, you know, anger says, is that emotion that comes out in the tongue. And it's uh, all over scripture. I'm not remembering the exact Bible portion, but says um, that, you know, the tongue leads to anger. The anger leads to the tongue and it comes out, overflows. And so if we are able to press pause before we speak and say, Lord, what is my intention in saying this? This is going to build someone up. That'll be the first step that we can take. If we go to the second one, which is purpose, purpose. You know, James chapter three, verse two, it says uh, that chapter uh, three, verse one, it says first that not many of you should be teachers, not many of you because you're going to be judged according to what you say. But then the second verse says that it is that, that your speaking is to bring all believers into maturity. And so the tongue uh, and uh, tongue mastery is a sign of spiritual maturity. It's a sign of spiritual maturity. If you cannot control your tongue, if you're just blowing steam and speaking whatever you want, then you have to consider whether you're spiritually mature or if you are a believer that has grown in Christ to the stature of Christ. Then James chapter 3 he goes on to talk about how a horse is bridled. It gets a bit 
put in his mouth. And that bit and the bridle is able to steer it in the right direction. If there's a turn coming, it's, it pulls it in a certain way and it goes in that direction. But uh, the whole horse, with all of its horsepower, is able to be steered by this bit in the mouth of the horse. Even a little child, uh, jockeys are pretty small, and they're able to steer this huge, more powerful animal with a little bit in the mouth of the horse. Then it talks about a rudder. A rudder, which is an equipment on the bottom of the ship, in the front of the ship, that kind of directs its location. So this large ship carrying hundreds and thousands of people is controlled by a rudder and it's able to give it direction. The same way the tongue is the manifestation and gives us direction and purpose in our life. If our tongue is doing that, then uh, we need to know that there is a tongue-heart connection. And if our tongue is not able to say good things, then we need to examine our hearts. Like a check engine light, where is our heart? And we've talked before about having a renewed heart, a heart transplant here in the past. We need to uh, bridle our tongue. We need to muzzle our tongue, uh, especially for the purpose of growing in maturity, becoming master over our tongue as a fruit of the Spirit, as growing in spiritual maturity. That is the purpose of the tongue. Then when we go on to, I combine three and four together for the lack of time, power and direction, power and parameters. In order to stick with the P, I put parameters, but it's really a compass or a direction of our heart. It says life and death are in the tongue. The tongue is small, but it is disproportionately powerful, and we are to muzzle or guard or brittle uh, our tongue. Because in our natural sense, we are uh, sinful beings and uh, what will come out of us will be sinful things. But if we are truly owners of a renewed heart, if we are born again and have a new life in Christ, then our heart is meditating on the word of God and it is uh, indwelling in him and being filled with his spirit. And what comes out of the well, what comes out of the heart will be things that will bless and edify others, that will bless, encourage and uplift others. So what you fill your heart with is what comes out of your mouth and what you fill your heart with will determine the direction of your life. If garbage is being put inside of your heart, if you're listening to all the things of the world and the worldly uh, music, the worldly uh, system, the worldly uh, uh, messages, the worldly uh, system of the world, then guess what will naturally come out and what direction your life will head? It will ha head for eternal damnation. And what comes out is deceit, lies, corruption. But if our heart is renewed by the Spirit, we're able to bless, encourage, and uplift others. We should use our words to bless others and not curse others. If you look at that acronym there, bless, bless stands for building others up, loving others, encouraging, soothing, and being Spirit-filled, right? Not cursing others, hypercritical, unwholesome talk, ridiculing others with a sharp tongue and being evil. But the part that spoke to me the most was number five, which is praise and prayer. Praise and prayer. What are we to use our tongue for? We are to use our tongue for praise and prayer. We use it in the natural language that we know, whether it's Hindi, Malayalam, English, whatever language you know, you pray in that language. For the Bible says, uh, pray, uh, ask and it shall be given unto you. Pray in the natural language. You also know the living sovereign God, so you, when in congregation or in your home, you will sing and give praise to the Lord and tell how awesome and declare the wonders of the Lord and you tell him that you trust in him. That's what we're doing when we're singing songs here in a minute. But there's also a component of speaking in tongues. 
which is an unknown language to you, and there will be uh, interpretation if it is done in a common setting, but also in the privacy of your home, you're supposed to use your tongue to speak in tongues in the unknown language which is used to bless and encourage and edify not others but yourself. Amen. Amen. The tongues that the Lord has given, the vessel of dishonor that is used in the natural sense to uh, curse others, we can use it to reverse the curse if we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we have the evidence of speaking in tongues. We're able to reverse the curse and speak the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. You know, the portion that where it spe speaks specifically about speaking uh, in truth with love is in Ephesians, I want to say. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I want to read a few other portions. Verse 15, 21 to 27, and a few other portions. We will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. We are part of the body of Christ, and we should use our tongue in a way that is speaking the truth in love, growing every way more and more to be like Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of living that is corrupted by lust and deception. After having a new body, a new uh, tongue, we should not continue to live in our old sinful nature or the former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew our thoughts and attitudes and put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all part of the same body. And don't let sin, uh, don't let... Don't sin by letting anger control you. Here that, here that, is, that is. So anger tries to control you uh, and overcome your heart and what comes out is evil things. So don't let anger control you. Be slow to anger was what we heard. And anger and our speech is connected. Amen. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry for anger gives foothold to the devil. Don't use foul or abusive language, verse 27, 29, and 32. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified or sealed you as your own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. That's what it says in James 1 verse 21 as well, that we need to hold on to the word God has spoken to us, which is what seals us for redemption on the day of redemption. Amen. So get rid of all bitterness, 29 to 32, rage, anger, harsh words and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So we need to reclaim our tongue after we have been born again. Amen? Amen. 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 So a careless word may kindle strife. A cruel word may wreck a life. A bitter word may smite and kill. A brutal word may accomplish nil. But a gracious word may smooth the way. Worship team, come on up. A joyous word may brighten a day. A timely word may lessen stress. A loving word will heal and bless. How many of you are willing to say, in 2023, I'm willing to take the prescription, be quiet, uh, be quick to listen, be slow to speak, be slow to get angry. I have a confession to make. This is something that I'm working on as well as my family reminds me as I'm speaking this. Reverse the curse and speak the truth in love. The unruly member of the tongue has become a vessel of honor. And we all get an opportunity right now to get up on our feet and use our tongues as a vessel of honor. Amen.
So get rid of those jailers. Get rid of those teeth and lips or biting down or, or things that hold you back. And let us get into an attitude of worship and say, Lord, I, I want to give you the praise and the lips that you've given me that has been an unruly member, maybe even throughout this week. But I ask for forgiveness, Lord. Help me to be more and more like you each and every day. Lord, help me to have my words be seasoned. Help it to bless others and to uplift others. But also help me to use my tongue to edify myself, to speak in tongues, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because human anger, it says, does not produce righteousness that God desires. If you claim to serve God and cannot control your tongue, you're fooling yourself and your religion is useless. So God has used the gift of the tongues to employ our deepest inner reaches to be able to reach in adoration and to praise the Lord, our living God. So after preparing their sermon, I changed the title. The, the new title is Reverse the Curse. Amen. Reverse the curse and speak the truth in love. Yes, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. What is inside of the heart, what is in the kanara is what comes out. What's in the heart is what will be spoken. So let us meditate on this as we go into a time of worship. Let us use our tongues to give glory to the living God, the creator of all things, and he is worthy to be praised, the sovereign Lord.